So here's the top eight tips on what you should be doing in the gym when you're programming, especially for fat loss. Number one, probably the most important, your program should actually match your diet. So if you're eating at a deficit, which you should be if you're trying to lose weight, there is no point in doing bodybuilding programs. You should be focusing on big compound movements, total body workouts, where you might be supersetting upper body exercise or the lower body exercise, just like I've done in this program here. This is more geared for fat loss, and it's an easier version where you don't need lots of volume. You're just trying to maintain muscle mass and maintain strength when you're eating at a deficit. It doesn't require tons of exercise, it doesn't require tons of reps. Because you are not eating enough food, you're not giving yourself enough stimulus to grow, so you're just trying to preserve your muscle mass and preserve your strength for the amount of calories that you're consuming. Second tip is time under tension. Again, there's no point in choosing big compound movements if you're getting 10 reps done in 15 seconds. It needs to be at least 40 seconds time under tension. Best way to do is a three second eccentric control rep and a one second concentric. Tip number three, no carbs before training. A lot of people would like to have carbs before they train, they say it gives them energy. A couple of reasons why you don't want to. Most importantly, it destroys your nitrogen balance, so you're not gonna get the right muscle recruitment. Secondly, you're gonna to have to burn those carbohydrates off before you start hitting the fat stores. Tip number four, work out at least four times a week. Research has shown that if you do four workouts a week, it's 60% better results than just three times a week. So just that one extra session a week, we get you 60% better results. Tip number five, not really training related, it's more diet related, and it's managing your insulin. So basically trying to space your meals out, three to four hours apart is ideal. Somewhat of a mini fast between dinner and breakfast, a 12 hour fast is ideal. And just constantly keeping in mind that insulin is the devil. Insulin has also been proven by research to actually aid you. Throw in this for health benefits to feel better, so you wanna manage that insulin. Tip number six, another one diet related, is actually looking after your liver. Limit the processed foods, limit the alcohol. Already managing insulin levels by spacing those meals out is gonna get you on the right track because your liver is your biggest detoxifying organ in the body. If it's constantly having to detoxify the foods you're consuming, the products you're putting on your body, or the liquids you're consuming, it's not getting a break. So you wanna give your liver a break, spacing out those meals, avoid those processed foods, avoid your alcohol, also avoid your supplements. If you're looking to lose weight really, really fast, Yes, I am the aggregate creatine, amino acids, protein powders to help you build muscle, but when you're looking to burn fat and you're eating at a deficit, you wanna give your liver a break. Once you have that liver detoxification working perfectly, it's much easier to lose weight. Tip number seven, quite an obvious one is compliance. Trying to comply to your program, have some form of accountability. Yes, hiring a personal trainer is probably the best way. You have an appointment each time, so it's in your diary, and you know where you're supposed to be at a certain time, and you're paying for that time. Another reason that people lack compliance in their weight loss programs is typically injuries. They get injured by going too hard and too fast. Having a personal trainer who assesses your body, assesses your injuries, and designs the program tailored for your movement capabilities is gonna avoid the injuries in the long term and the short term. Compliance to the program can be very hard, but I do recommend you do track your progress at some point, whether it's hopping on the scales, doing before and after pictures, or having your body fat tested through a skin fold measurement. If the measurements of the scales haven't moved in four days, that's when I'd like to reassess. It could be the liver, it could be the insulin, you're not spacing your meals out. So that's why it's always good to track. That is really important. And tip number eight, probably not the least important, it's probably a bit more higher up in the rank than I recommend, is actually recording what weights you lifted. Remember the goal is to preserve your muscle mass, preserve your strength. If you're just guessing each time and how much you're putting on the bar, you'll actually be surprised. When you are eating better, you're gonna be feeling better and you're actually probably gonna get stronger. So if you're recording your weights, I wouldn't be surprised if your weight's actually increasing each week and you're getting stronger. So there you have it guys, those are my top eight tips to hear more fat loss in your weight training program. Stay tuned for the rest of the video on the exercise selection and tips on each exercise that I did. Obviously the first one, very basic exercise, the decline bench press. I always vary the angles, better for he shoulder health. But a lot of people who do do bench press do complain about shoulder problems. Quick little tip, all you want to think about is you're not going to press the weight up. You want to think about bringing elbows together. The chest contracts by bringing the muscles together. So if we think about instead of pushing up, you're going to contract the chest by making your elbows touch. Now the bar, holding the bar in the hands isn't going to let you bring your elbows together, but just that analogy is going to take the pressure off the shoulders. Another quick tip, you always see people do a shoulder blades back and down into the bench. You try and do that on decline as well because you'll see the pec activation as well. So if my hands are here, my pecs are up and they're not quite activated, but as soon as I, if you put your hand underneath your arm and you push your arm down, you can instantly feel that pec contract. So if you have, you're on the bench, you unrack it and you go shoulder blades back and down into the bench, that's gonna instantly activate the pecs. Then you lower the bar for three seconds. So it looks like this, underneath the bar, you want the eyes underneath the bar, unrack, Shoulder blades are back and down, three seconds down, slightly lower than the nipple line, and think about bringing those elbows together to contract the pecs.
Next one's a trap bar deadlift. I've opted to go low handles for more range, more range of motion to make it a bigger compound movement. From the front, all you want to do, shoulder width stance. You want to make sure you are bending the knees. You're going to come down and grab onto the bar. Hopefully your hands are directly next to your shins. Shoulder blades are back and down. And then from the side, you just want to check a few angles. You want to see that you do have some form of shin angle. So my shin angle is coming out to the front. We definitely don't want zero shin angle. That's going to put more strain through the low back. And another thing you don't want is you don't want to try and be too upright as well. So you don't want to be in this position. So you can think about an imaginary line with a shin angle, imaginary line from a back angle. They will intersect somewhere up here, but you don't want to have parallel lines in a trap bar. You definitely don't want to have that the lines crossing too early. So you're going to have the shoulder blades are back and down. There's my knees in front. There's my arch in my back. My bum slightly high and drive through the floor in a three seconds eccentric. Hit the floor and pushing up through the legs. The next one, some shoulder external rotations. Quite an important exercise, always put some prehab, rehab exercise in there. Again, when you're trying to lose weight, you are trying to preserve muscle mass and preserve your strength. You do not want your rotator cuff muscles to decrease in strength when you start to go into back into the surplus and you're trying to put on size again. So with this one, a couple of key setups are important. You wanna make sure that when you position your elbow, there is a crease between your VOL and your kneecap that your elbow goes onto. We wanna make sure that from the side that your elbow is slightly lower than your shoulder. So if I bring my knee into close to me, my elbow is directly the same height as my shoulder. If I take my foot out a bit more, that's where it's slightly lower on my shoulder. You're trying to do your best to create 90 degrees of this knee angles here, and your chest is facing 45 degrees. Last position is hand underneath you to keep your chest up. A three second eccentric as far as you can go down, and a one centric concentric just coming up level with the shoulder and the elbow. Key thing to look out for is you don't want to cheat the movement using the wrist. You don't want to use the wrist to point yourself down. You definitely don't want to use the wrist to cock back first, and that's going to get the extra range of motion. Always have a neutral position in the wrist. Quite an important exercise for you, like I mentioned, injury prevention, but also structural balance. You should be able to do eight reps of 10% of your one RM of a bench press. So if you can bench press 100 kilos, you should be able to do eight reps with a 10 kilo. Not many people can do that. That's why I suggest the rotator cuff muscle is quite weak and a lot of people should be a staple definitely in strength building and even fat burning programs. The incline bench press is quite an obvious one. We are doing a 45 degree incline. Again, changing stimulus for the shoulder joint. Really good to go through various different angles. Also the grips varying, pronated and neutral. Again, good for shoulder health. With this one, there's nothing tricky to it, but you can see I go neutral grip and on the way down, I supinate it slightly. Again, just to focus on the maximum, the stretch and the hypertrophy of the pec muscles. You can definitely use the same analogy with driving with the elbows together. Another quick point with this one, we mentioned before the decline and trying to take the pressure off the shoulders. A nice little tip for this one is if you can focus on the muscle that you're trying to work. So we are thinking about the muscle lengthening through your chest and shortening. So if you can focus, if you have a mirror in front of you or you can mentally think about, that muscle is just separating and coming together. Again, instead of you trying to avoid that pushing the weight up, that's just taking your shoulders off the bench and that's where you're gonna be in trouble. So and think about this when you're lying down, you've got neutral grip, here I am, I can feel that stretch in my chest and I can feel the two points that they're pointed off and I'm just trying to bring those points together. It won't be a push this time, it'll be more like, I'm just trying to feel like there's my separation, my points going apart, I'm trying to bring them together. It's a different movement. I'm definitely contracting the muscles as opposed to pushing the weight up. It's a different feeling. It's hard to explain, but you have to think about it yourself. That analogy of looking in the mirror is probably a little bit better if you do it yourself that way. Leg curl is a lower body one. Not many people understand there's over 20 different variations you can do on a leg curl machine because you've got different heads of the hamstring. So I chose a dorsiflexion, which is toes pointing towards my face, and also turned out more hitting the lateral head of the hamstrings. Quite simple, you just want to make sure, because some people are quite flexible around the ankle, is that you actually got your whole femur is moving out to get that external rotation of the hips. So have a look as I lie down here. There's my toes pointed out, but I want to make sure that my whole leg is actually slightly external rotated. That way, as I contract, keeping the toes pointed, this would mean towards my face, contract it that way, toes are pointed out slightly, up for one, and down for three. And then the last exercise is what we have called a trap three raise. The trap three is a series of muscle that helps with shoulder stability around the shoulder blade. It's really good again for injury prevention and definitely maintaining strength. Similar to the external rotation, again, you should be able to get eight reps on 10 kilos if your bench press one RM is 100 kilos.
I really hope you enjoyed all the information in that video. Don't forget to subscribe, leave me a comment if you like this video and I'll do some more. I'll see you guys next time.